For the Israeli side of the argument, we are joined by Israel's Minister of the Economy, former Chief of Staff to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Mr. Naftali Bennett. We appreciate you being here, sir. Welcome to Washington. I'm going to take it that by your nodding, you agreed with most of the things that Senator Graham said, but I want to go one step further. There seems to be two discussions here in Washington, one of which is about Iran, the one that was just with Senator Graham. The other one about is the speech and the administration coming after the Prime Minister for going and coming to the United States to speak to Congress. Which argument is most important? Well, I think uh, clearly uh, the Iranian threat is, uh, is paramount. We're looking at the, the deal that's been uh, contemplated right now. It's an unmitigated disaster. It's uh, one of those events in history that 100 years from now people are going to ask, what were they thinking? This deal effectively legitimizes Iran's uh, uranium enrichment program. It creates a path for them to, to get a bomb within several years. And this is unacceptable. You know, there's 20 different countries in the world that have nuclear power and they don't enrich uranium. Canada, Mexico, Sweden, Switzerland, Spain, you don't need to enrich uranium. Now, Iran, uh, th there have been six consecutive UN Security Council resolutions that said Iran cannot uh, enrich uranium at all. And they violated this. What sort of message is this? You violate UN uh, decisions and then you get a prize where, where the West says you can go ahead and do it. It's often been said that the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Netanyahu, views himself almost as Churchill and views this moment almost like the 1930s, Nazi Germany on the rise, the Ayatollah on the rise right now. If you follow that out, who's Chamberlain? Well, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to go down that path, but my, the point is that right now, Iran is developing intercontinental missiles. Why are they doing that? If they want to hit Israel, they've got already Shahab-3 missiles. They don't need that. They need those missiles to hit New York, to hit London, to hit Paris. Now, right now, if we legalize this, this criminal path of, of the biggest exporter of terror in the world, Iran, it means that America's going to be at risk. It means that Europe's going to be at there, risk. There's a lot. We, we've seen what, what, what happens with radical Islam, and just match that now with nuclear power. That's a disaster. So we, you, we hear the, what is the disaster. We've heard from over a long time about the prime minister, about a bad deal, a dangerous deal, these kinds of things. What deal with Iran would be acceptable to the Israelis? Or, or to the world. Uh, a deal that says they cannot enrich uranium. They can have nuclear power but not enrich uranium or anything that can allow them to ultimately develop a, a nuclear bomb. That's the deal. Just like Canada and like Mexico, if they want nuclear power, they don't need to enrich uranium. There's no reason to allow them to do it. You know, it's sort of like uh, a boxing match. Iran's on the floor right now. The, the referee's counting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. The, the sanctions have been working. The, and now and you think the U.S. administration is letting them off easy? Exactly. There is an alternative. There's a viable alternative that right in front of us, it's ratchet up the sanctions, wait a bit, and Iran will have to give up their nuclear program. Instead, we're so, sort of picking them up and, and letting them uh, go on and, and keep their program. There's, a, there's another side to this argument that's even playing out there inside of Israel. And that is, is that I want to put up a quote from Merida Gan, the former chief of the Mossad. And he was quoted in the Haaretz newspaper, a very well-respected newspaper. And Dagan described Netanyahu's policies as destructive to the future and security of Israel. Why is he wrong? Well, the, the overwhelming majority of Israelis don't support that uh, position. And by the way, Haaretz is a very left-wing uh, liberal newspaper. But bottom line is that... Uh, by far, most Israelis understand that this is a, a, a terrible disaster, this deal. Uh, if I want my grandchildren to live in Israel, you know what, for that matter, my children, I've got four children. I don't want them so to you be view, at So you view it as a matter of survival, and that's one of the things that the Prime Minister has put, and one of the arguments that's made why it is worth coming to the United States and giving this speech. It's obviously put a strain on U.S.-Israeli relations. Quickly, Secretary of State John Kerry today on ABC News said the following. And we have the quote right here. He said, we have a closer relationship with Israel right now in terms of security than any other time in history. This is Senator Marco Rubio in an exclusive interview with Fox News. This administration is treating the Ayatollah in Iran with more respect than the Prime Minister of Israel. And, and the, what po folks don't understand is it's not just a, a, a diplomatic spat. Any sort of distance between the U.S. and Israel incentivizes Israel's enemies to attack Israel. It creates real danger for Israel in the region. Very quickly, who's right? 
Well, you know, we have no bit better friend in the world than America, and, and it goes way deeper than the two leaders. It's between the people, the same values of freedom, of democracy, of uh, self-fulfillment. And we're in the toughest region in the world. We've got ISIS and Hezbollah and Syria flanking us. So you can see us as the forefront of the global battle and terror. We're the guys fighting for the, the whole free world. What we'd expect the free world is to back us in this very tough fight. You know, I myself fought in, in several conflicts as a commando uh, a commander. It's not fun, but you got to do what you got to do to protect our freedom and values and our lives. And, and we do hope that America and especially Congress will stand up to this historic challenge and say, this is a bad deal, we're going to block it. Well, without a question, it is a dangerous part of the world that you live in. And we know you have an election coming up in a couple of weeks. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you joining us.